This month's special, special guest, I don't even know where to begin. Like, she is the reason why we have the Love That For Us section. Every week on Friday in high school, we walk into class, we get a sticky note, and we have to write the best thing that happened to us that week. And so I wanted to take that and do a remix on it, the best thing that happened to us in the month. She's a legend, she's a queen, she's the baddest at BNHS. Can I please introduce Miss Sarah Hallen? Like, I graduated I, like over a year ago. Like, it's been a calendar year since I graduated. That's, that's impact. That's impact you right there for you. Let's go ahead and get into this interview. You ready? Yes. Okay. Could you please tell us what you do? Sure. So, um, I currently am teaching freshman biology mm -hmm. um, at Byron Nelson High School. Um, but I have been in, this is going to be my 14th year of teaching. Um, I've taught 7th grade science. Eighth grade science, I taught seniors, uh, earth and space, environmental systems, um, biology. Um, I even was a coach, so uh, an instructional coach, so helping oh. teachers be, be better teachers. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness. Woo! We're gonna say What made you want to be an educator? So, uh, I've wanted to be a teacher for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, my grandmother was a teacher, my mom was a teacher. Uh, and it was just kind of one of those things that I've, has always been instilled inside of me um, to help others and um, want them to grow. Yes! Um, like I was saying before, impact, like this is a very impactful relationship. Like I was your student a year and a half ago and our relationship is still great and amazing and like she's someone who's left an impact on my life. And something she also did in the classroom is provide such a safe space for anyone in that classroom. And it's very impressive to do just because at my high school with over like 6,000 people. There's 3,000, but yes, 2,966. This year? Okay, sorry, I mean dramatic. <laughs> with over like 3,000 people, and like at least when I was in school, there's like 3,000 people. To make like every one of those people have like a safe space to go to is very hard to do. So how did you manage to make your classroom such a safe space for everyone? I really believe that all kids can learn, no matter who they are, where they come from. I, I want them to feel like they belong somewhere because there's so many students, kids that don't have that. Um, and I wanted to build a space for them to be able to be comfortable with who they are, what they want to be, grow them into be the person that they are. Um, and I can only do that if they are trusting and feel comfortable enough to be in the space. Um, I'm tolerant and accepting of whomever walks into my door. Uh, I don't care who they are. Uh, yeah, I mean, right here. <laughs> um, yeah. Before we continue the interview, let's go to the word of the month. <laughs> What's the word of the month? Must know the word of the month. Give me the word of the month. Someone tell me that word of the month. Hey guys, welcome to the word of the month. This word can, is very versatile. Like, I love a good versatile word. This word can mean a bunch of things based on the inflection of your voice. This month's word of the month is drum roll. Oh. <laughs> it can be used for so much. Let's use it in some sentences. Oh. 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 <laughs> you can just use it so much. Oh. I personally have been using O oh more in text than I have been saying it out loud. But like even on text, like you know, if an O is followed by dot, 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 you know what that person means. Or if an O is followed by exclamation point, you know what they mean. Like it's just such a great word. Congratulations, O. Oh. Let's get back to the interview though. Um, I have found that if my students don't trust me as a person, then they're not going to trust me as their educator and be able to learn anything from me. So I think that knowing who they are as a person helps them or helps me know how they're going to work in my class it helps me figure out you know who i can sit them with um, and when i can sit them with a different type of person that's not the normal person that they would choose to sit with um, so building relationships being open to let them provide me feedback if 
and they feel like there's something that I'm not doing right, like, what can I do to help you? What can I do to help you be a better student? Um, what can I do to be a better educator for you? Um, teaching them acceptance. Even though you don't like that person, you can still work with them. That's okay. Like, it's okay to not like someone, but still be able to work with them. I do that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always gonna be people that you don't like that you have to work with, and that's okay. But you still have to know that you, you still have to respect them as a person. Yeah. Trying to teach my students that is something that's so important to me, so that they know that there's other people out there that are not like them. There's gonna be people that are a lot different than you, and you're going to have to work with these people that you don't know how to work with. And so that's one of the things that I like to do in my classroom is kind of make them feel a little bit uncomfortable at times, just to kind of push them just a little bit to show them that it's okay to be uncomfortable at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's good. What she's saying is very true because when I was a student in her classroom, like I was sitting at a table with people that I knew of, but I wasn't necessarily the closest with them. And even in the classroom as a whole, the classroom, we all interacted with each other and we all had opportunities to be in groups together. It sure could have been awkward, but it was never like uncomfortable in the sense of like, I can't do this or like, this is too much. The space she provided was like, you know what though, but we're all in this class, you know, we know this is a safe environment. Let's work together. Let's do what we need to do. The relationship will come with that. And of course, yes, there were people in the class that I necessarily didn't like, but I was never disrespected in class. I loved, I'd like to think I didn't disrespect anyone in class. And that's because of boom, because of that, which I think is very special. All classrooms should definitely have that instilled in them because I fear a lot don't. Let me tell you, like going from, and I went to a big high school, but like high school to an even bigger college with people from all across the world go to my college. Like there's bound to be people you're not gonna like, and that's just how life is. You also do have jobs or something to do. You have something to accomplish. And if you, you and that person don't accomplish that, no one's gonna take, well, I don't like them as an answer. Like you need to get what you need to do done. And honestly, your class has helped with that. Um, you didn't sort of answer this in your previous answer, but what is one thing you want your students to take away from you? I want not only to build a safe space for them, but I want them to build a safe space to communicate with each other. Like outside of my classroom, you may not ever talk to the other person at your table, but by the time you leave my classroom, I want you to be able to have a conversation with someone. Um, I want you to be able to build skills. Um, that's kind of what I like to focus on. You know, it's not just about the content. Yes, science is amazing, but building skills on how to be a better human is even more important to me. Teaching some of those critical soft skills that's not always taught at home or not always taught in school is something that I feel is necessary for my students to go away with. Personally, at my table I sat with, I sat with like a football player, I sat with um, a baseball girlfriend, like I sat with um, a softball player, and like I was like on the dance team, like that brought us all together. Like, yes, I knew of them before I got to that classroom, but our relationships like increased so much due to that. And like, it's very interesting because like our dynamics were very like, all like not all over the place, but very different. And like we came from different things. Yes, that was my like table, but the whole classroom always interacted with each other. Sometimes a little too much, I'm just kidding. Maybe, but, yeah. <laughs> but we like all <laughs> interacted with each other. That is definitely something that you do do in the classroom, which I do love. I do. Do. I said do do. <laughs> <laughs> this is something I always wonder about educators, just because sometimes it seems, I guess like outside looking in, that sometimes you know your work life versus your personal life can like blend in with each other, especially when it comes to like answering emails for students or then bosses and stuff. So how do you personally like balance both? Well, you see, <laughs> um, I'm not really great at that. Mm -hmm. um, it has taken a lot to create that work-life balance and I still struggle with that because I do care so much about my students and so much about my content that it's hard to quit at 4 p.m. every day. I work with students that have a lot going on, and so I do kind of take in some of that, and so it's not always the easiest thing in the world. I have an amazing supportive husband who will always listen to me. I have three beautiful dogs and two goats that just 
I can cuddle anytime I want to. Um, and so not the goats, they're not really cuddly. But I know that I have a support system um, with friends and family that I can lean on if things are getting too overwhelming. So that's kind of nice to have that. Um, not everybody gets that. If I'm having a stressful day, I can pick up the phone and um, call one of my former students and be like, hey, can you talk me down because these kids are driving me crazy. Yeah. But it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> that's good. That's so good. Talk about how you taught different ages, different grades, you taught at different schools, you've even taught teachers, basically. What did you learn from teaching the different grades and ages? Patience. It was a big thing <laughs> that you have to learn. Patience with a seventh grader looks about the same as patience with a senior in, in May. The seniors in May will do nothing, um, and some seventh graders will just do nothing. Um, so patience is a big thing that I learned. Another thing that like I've learned is seeing the development of a person and seeing how much they change from a seventh grader, an eighth grader, a ninth grader. Because I've seen kids go from seventh grade to a senior um, and seeing how much they change and become like a real actual human. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a fun thing to see how much they grow. Sometimes I'm too patient and let them do a little bit too much before I step in, but that's just a trait that you have to learn as you go. Mm -hmm. When I was a student with Doors of Jelly, was there 30 of us? Or Probably about 30. Kids. Yeah, so that's 30 different personalities, mm -hmm. 30 different levels of like students. And that's just in one class period. One class period. So, you know, I have about 170 students every year. What are some of your future goals? And it can be either as a person or as an educator. And it can be multiple, because I got one. But what are you going to share? Oh my gosh, I want to hear all your goals, but <laughs> I recently completed, a couple years ago, I completed my master's degree. Oh. Was, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, I'm, you know, I'd like to maybe go get my PhD sometime. We'll see. Dr. Hallen. It would be kind of nice to be Dr. Hallen. I really would love to work more with teachers. There is such a teacher shortage right now. Um, you know, the state of the world is, is what it is. There are so many students that, that need a good teacher. And so I would really, really love to help teachers be better teachers and how to instill that love for kids in them. That would, that's a goal that I would like to achieve. Basically, she's busy, okay? She's getting that PhD. Stop my number. Stop my number. So, like, I just want to point this out. All of the questions that I've asked and all the answers she's given, they have been, like, about servicing, like, herself, but also the, those around her and those that, like, get in contact with you, which that is also, that just says a lot about your character. Like, the raw footage of this, every answer she's given has been about what she can do to impact the world or anyone positively. I know for me, like, what I want to do, especially, like, with the man of you, I want as many people as I can to hear that. Because I think it's so unfair for me to just, or your students to be like, ooh, icky, icky. Because like that stuff people really need to hear. And honestly, truly speaking, we do need more educators like you. And like, fortunately, like I come from a good place of like top of the line educators, like very smart, very good, very great all around. And I know that's not the case for most people. And it's really unfortunate. And that's why it's just like, anyone who views this, if I can just share, share some of what I had, with you and like share some of her with you for all the students out there listening because I have a lot of still a lot of y'all are students at different levels but it's just like just know like there are more people like her than not it's just not a lot of people know and that's not a lot of people know that and then not gonna lie students this is where I have to go with us not a lot of us take the time to figure that out like that's called impact like impact like like I got that from you I got that from you like what are you talking about right now? So what is the best thing that happened to you this month? So the best thing that happened to me this month uh, is I got to go and visit my best friend in Palm Springs, California. Work. Um, he is a doctor and I haven't gotten to see him in a couple of years because we've been busy, you know, life happens, he lives thousands of miles away. Um, and so I had the opportunity to go out and see him before school started. It was so worth it just to be able to spend some time with a friend and help one. 
she ate. Like, honestly, and I love seeing the pictures. Like, if you know, you know. If you don't, sorry. Like, I just, like, it's exclusive. But, like, you driving everywhere in the desert. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, she might not be coming back, y'all. I almost did. <laughs> I was like, she might not be coming back. She's having a time. But thank you so, so much for being a part of the Man of You, the second Man of You. Ooh, this is super special, super amazing. That being said, we're gonna kick this off and go to the Love That For Us section. Thank you guys for watching, let's go. Did you guys enjoy that Man of You interview? I know I sure did. It was really special interviewing. <sighs> Miss Helen, I literally love her so much. She may have been my teacher in the past, but like I love that our relationship has continued. And literally, she's the one who inspired the Love That For Us section. So like literally, she has been super influential on me, so I'm so glad to have had her. And I hope you guys really enjoyed it too. Obviously, Miss Helen, she's the one who kicked us off of the Love That For Us section. I'm gonna share mine. I was really nervous about this interview or about the next edition of The Man of You just because I wasn't sure if it was gonna happen because I didn't have a location to record. But fortunately, like due to some thinking and like my amazing cousin and stuff like that, I was able to find a place to record and bring The Man of You for you guys, which I'm super grateful for. Let's see what you manifest accomplished and let's love that for us someone said watching deadpool and wolverine okay did you like go to the movies to see or did you watch it at home i'm pretty sure you went to the movies because it's not on like shooting services yet love that for you my youtube is growing consistently and i only started a month ago that deserves claps okay because consistency is key it's about to be five years on youtube for me and like We've had some inconsistent years, some very consistent stuff. It's very up and down, but honestly, stay consistent and stay true to what you want to do, and then, like, you're good. But that, I love that for you. Congrats. Someone said, I got promoted to shift lead. <laughs> Make that money. Now hand it over. Give me a cut. Give me, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Literally, congratulations. You better work up that ladder. You better move up that corporate ladder. We love to see it. Someone said, learn to be okay with being alone. I'm pretty sure they're talking about like in relationships probably. Um, that is something that is very hard for some people to come to terms with. Good for you. You're gonna have your days where it sucks. You're gonna have your days where it's awesome. But literally just remember the grass. I mean, we're only going up from here. I was gonna say the grass is green on the other side, but like literally we're only going up from here, okay? So good for you. Someone said, save money. So I wish I could relate to that. I love that for you. I wish I could say I love that for us, but unfortunately that has that's not true for me. That's not true for me, but I love that for you. I got a 32 on my ACT. Catherine, is a 32 on the ACT, like is that a high score? That like sounds good. Yeah, the highest is 36. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, love that for us. That's really good. A 30 yeah, so I'm gonna need you to come, like, we're gonna have to share some brain for the rest of us, please. That's amazing. Um, someone said, getting to see an old friend happy. Now that, now I love that for us. Like, not only, I, I hope that person, like, knows that they have a good person in their circle or that's close to them because, honestly, friends love to see other friends, or friends should love to see other friends at their best and at their peak. And I love that comment. That's really sweet. That's so sweet. I love that for us. Okay, last one. We're a tad closer to our new dog. Oh my gosh, we love, we love that for us. You know, I have dogs, or I have a dog, and like, I love fur babies. I love my dogs. Um, and when and when Iggy was still here, like, we really weren't worried because we were wondering, like, is Iggy gonna like Apollo? Is Apollo gonna like Iggy? But th <laughs> that wasn't a question. So that's really, really good. Continue to grow closer to your fur baby because honestly, they sometimes are the best like support. They're, they're sometimes the best support in the world. Sometimes you just need, you just need someone to listen and animals be listening. Apollo be listening. Iggy, he listened. But anyways, thank you guys so, so, so much for watching this edition or the July edition of The Man of You. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and as much as Miss Helen did. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.